everyone welcome back to the channel so today I have a really fun video I'm very excited to make this I'm going to take the same piece of music which is going to be Brahms fourth symphony fourth movement and I'm going to show you two different conductors conducting it sort of side by side to try and show you a bit more of what conducting is really about and how the same piece of music conducted by two different people can really sound very different. So I chose two great conductors and two great symphony orchestras so that um, we're not here comparing who is better because they're both great. Even though I may have a personal favorite, I will tell you about that in the end. And this is of course what I can deduce out of what I see as if I were a musician sitting in the orchestra. But I will say there's also an important part of preparing the pieces that happens through rehearsals and I have no idea what happened there. So this is going to be what I can deduce out of this video. So the first thing, of course, is the beginning of the movement. But this is very important because it is a, um, a theme that is going to reappear constantly throughout the movement. So to talk about the beginning, I have here my score and my metronome by Soundburner, not sponsored, but you can sponsor me if you'd like. And here both conductors are really very different. Um, we can talk about this objectively and subjectively. I'm gonna start with objectively, the speed. <laughs> the speed that Cliver decides is significantly faster than the speed that Bernstein decides. Again, not giving opinions until the end. I measured it with my metronome and Cliver's version, the first one, was around 105 per beat and Bernstein's version was around 75. So that is significantly slower. you two very different results not only obviously because of the speed but in the aura of the theme in the in in what we feel about them and you might be asking what is actually on the score what tempo this should be and on the score it says allegro energico e passionato which means uh, passionate and energic allegro so you could argue maybe Bernstein was according to this indication a bit on the uh, slower side but what sometimes happens with Brahm I like well, we'll digress here 30 seconds Brahms is a very full composer. If you look at the scores, there is so many voices. He liked to write a lot of counterpoints. So you have a lot of stuff stuck in, in everything. And so I think also going to the slower side could be to allow more time for us to hear all the little phrases and everything that is inside. So you, you gain something, you lose something, but again, this is all personal preferences and they're both perfectly fine. I want to show you through a couple of minutes, side by side, different choices that each conductor made of what they wanted to hear out of the orchestra most. So for example, the theme that now comes has two, two sounds in every bar, one and two. And so we see here with Cliver that he does not purposely um, highlight any of both of them. He wants both sounds to be sharp and intense. If we now watch Bernstein, you will see in his gesture and you will hear in the result that he is given more emphasis or more, he wants the second beat to be very aggressive and, and very sharp. And the first one is a little bit less important in, in hierarchy. shape the whole phrase to begin very powerful and very forte and slowly diminish. And I think it is clearer in Bernstein when we see how he starts this, this second phrase and how he ends it. And then we move to one where what I want to show you here side by side is how the phrasing is structured of, of this part. You will see in Cliver that he starts conducting, it seems like he's kind of 
floating in one instead of showing one two three which is you know this is written in three four he's sort of showing just one if you pay attention whereas watch that exact same part with Bernstein So what I want to show you is, in that passage for Cliver, things were grouped in a much bigger way. So instead of giving way to every single beat, he sort of grouped three into one. That's how he saw the phrase going. And that's why if you see him, you might think, hey, why is this guy just showing one and the other one showing one, two, and three? Does it suddenly change? No, we're still in three, but Cliver decided that he wanted the feel of that part to be more in one, to have the things grouped in larger things and the phrase overall expanding wider. And Bernstein gave a lot of emphasis to each one of the beats within the 3-4. Now, this is obviously something that was decided before when you decide on the tempo. If Bernstein wanted to group those three beats into one, he would be hanging forever in the air because it's so much slower. I hope this was clear. I know that this part was a little bit nerdier, but um, this is why conducting looks so different. This is why you might see someone going like this and someone going like this and thinking, is it, I don't understand, it's the same scheme. but. These are the little decisions that give the musicians an idea of how to phrase. Because if you have this beat, but someone's showing this to you in one, you know that you need to um, place the accents differently. If someone is asking you to, you know, really, you know, go to every single beat, then you go to every single beat. I'm being redundant, I think, but um, it's it's very interesting. I'm going to show you two more passages. And I think that'll be it because otherwise I'll be here forever. But the next passage is a very interesting one because we have this, this alternate notes between winds and strings. So we get a, a, a chord from winds, a chord from strings. Cliver, the first version, wants them clearly to be like a continuum of sound. He does not want winds cut strings cut, winds cut. He wants winds to continue to strings. And so he's gesturing like I'm doing, uh, to show that he wants a continuity of sound. Whereas Bernstein wants more it to be like little chimes and little blocks that are separate. I think it's also, if not super clear, he doesn't cut off. Um, it is clear that he's not gesturing in the same way because he does not want the same result. And the last thing I want to show you is um, a phrase that comes up in a little while where we have the flute soloist, it's like a solo part for the flute. The difference here is that Cliver, the first example, really leaves him very alone. He is just simply showing a little inner world within himself of emotion, but he is definitely backing off because he feels that is the best way in that circumstance with that orchestra, with that player, to achieve the most out of that. We then go to Bernstein and it, it's quite the opposite. You can see him uh, really managing or, or showing for every single note what intention he wants the flute player mostly to, to be doing. So he is actually showing a lot. Personally, now for the reveal of favoritism, I love Cliver, um, the first one. I I really, really like everything he does. 
Um, this stuff is also very personal and also almost spiritual, but it's like with some people, I just feel like, well, that's exactly how I see it. That's exactly how I would do it. But by no means is that a good or bad assessment. And, you know, I know a lot of people that would prefer the Bernstein version over the Cliver version. But most importantly, I wanted to show you versions. You know, this is why a conductor can make a lot of difference. Obviously, I'm talking about an orchestra that does not need a conductor to be able to play things. So I'm not talking about a youth orchestra or an amateur orchestra or any other context. This is an orchestra that has all of the technical parts solved um, and the conductor comes to bring that little extra and these are two options of results that we get. I didn't even pick the most uh, contrasting ones that I could have. I mostly picked the ones that showed the conductor the most and that were, you know, two revered orchestras and conductors so that there is no doubt that they are both incredibly amazing, equally amazing, so it's not a matter of levels, it's a matter of visions. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you did because I have a lot of fun with this and I could do this for so many pieces and so many conductors. I would love to hear from you if you found it clear, if it was a little bit tricky, whatever it is, and I will see you next time.